Good morning and welcome to Morning Devotions with the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Paul Beers and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording this service so that others can access it at a time convenient for them. Let us begin. Susan, are you on I thought you were going to do that. The Lord be with you and also yes. with you. <laughs> Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, confess our sins, and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit, we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against your neighbor in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and we re repent of all our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our mouth and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I'll do the Venite today. Okay. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. We continue our reading this morning in the book, St. Benedict's Toolbox by Jane Tomain. We'll be reading a section that begins on page 99, uh, Conversion of Life as Change. Conversion of life is a process that involves change, but there is a delicate balance between stability and change, between acceptance of a situation and working to change a situation. As in monastic life, Christian lay living must balance stability and change. Conversion means that all of one's life must be open to the possibility of change in order to respond to the challenges God gives us. Change is not the result of our own desire for excitement. It should not be an attempt to escape from difficult or monotonous circumstances. Rather, change is the result of genuinely listening to God and trying to discern his plan for my life. It is often helpful 
to talk with a wise friend or a spiritual guide to discern whether the desire for change is an escape from or a path to. This help in discerning God's direction is critical. Knowing the value of community. Benedict advises his abbots to always seek the input of others in the community when making important decisions. He quotes from the book of Sirach, do everything with counsel and you will not be sorry afterward. To live is to face ch constant change, changes in job, changes in residence, changes in family members, births, deaths, separation, divorce, to name only a few, and wear us down and make us resistant to change. We can add to this list the endless change, changes that happen between parents and children. As the children grow physically and emotionally, spread their wings and fly from the nest. How can the practice of conversion of life help us negotiate these changes? First, conversion of life encourages a positive and constructive response to change. Conversion of life asks us to remain open to the grace that can be found in change. Instead of fighting change, we look to see what we can learn from it. We're willing to evaluate each situation to discern where God's calling us now, rather than just following old patterns. Mm -hmm. Second, we need to be aware that other people can call us to conversion of life. Our interactions with others expose who we are, often calling us to change. Conversion of life brings an openness to growth and change, a willingness to look at ourselves and to be challenged by God and by others. Letting go, especially of our egos, isn't easy, but Benedict gives us some encouragement. In the prologue to the rule, he says not to be overwhelmed with fear and flee the path to salvation. It is narrow at the beginning, prologue 48. It will be difficult and will bring about many small deaths. But as we go, allow our egos to die to Christ, his beauty will fill our whole being. The end of the reading. Any what, thoughts or reflections? I like the sentence where it said, whether the desire for change is an escape from or a path to. I think that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. When we look at change. Yeah. I can see the importance of community. You know, I think being with you in the morning keeps me on track, you know? I mean, it's so easy just to... <clears throat> float along but if you have other people <laughs> reminding mm -hmm. you of where you're supposed to be going it really helps mm -hmm. Absolutely. i think these words help me accept change easier um mm -hmm. i don't i don't accept change well or like change. Um, and I think these words are, are important, at least for me to remember. Mm -hmm. Consulting others is important too. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that in our um, processes that we have for ordination or the diaconate, uh, it involves uh, along that uh, along that process the reaching out to others um, and uh, seeking uh, advice, seeking guidance, mm -hmm. seeking feedback, um, and uh, uh, for those that are have been involved uh, as Mike is now in in the process of discernment, it's it's certainly a, a major major change in life that. Uh, uh, it, 
extremely helpful to get the input of others. And I, I do like the, the where he says the first, or she says, the first conversion of life encourages a, a positive and constructive response to change. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times I've had to change, not by my choice, but by uh, circumstances. circumstances. And uh, the more positively you can approach those things, um, I found that to be very, very helpful. Instead of to see what we can learn from it, hmm. um, we're willing to evaluate each situation to discern where God is calling us now rather than just following old patterns. I find that very helpful. Mm -hmm. Changes, I remember the book, um, Who Moved the Cheese? Did you all read, anybody read that? It talked about change. Mm -hmm. And change is uncomfortable for me, majorly. And this par that paragraph encourages me. I think of my father when I think of change and how long he lived and how as a little boy, he'd run to the door, went to, to the window to see a car go by you know, because <laughs> it was a big event. And um, his adapt uh, ability to adapt to change, I think was part of it, what enabled him to live into his nineties. Mm -hmm. I've seen that with other older people, the ability to adapt to change is life-giving or can be. Yeah. Well, we've always all adapted to change with following a Zoom meeting. Never expected that. <clears throat> yeah, I think I mentioned for, for me, the biggest change was uh, when I started my career fresh out of college, I decided I'd go into banking because that would be a nice stable <laughs> career people went to work the money for banks <laughs> it's where the money is and you know you went to work for the bank and then you retired at age 66 with a watch right um oh boy was i in for a surprise <laughs> uh, you know the world changed and you know I, I not only went through being in one type of career in the bank to having really four different careers within the bank. And then at age 57, they sold the bank. So I didn't have a job anymore. Um, wow. What a surprise. I could retire <laughs> at 57. What a change. And that was, you know. Well, oh, you embraced that quite well. well I did embrace <laughs> that quite well. But it was, you know, it was, absolutely no control on my part in the process. It was like, okay, I guess I'm retiring. Hmm. Here we go. Well, I follow stability because as a young kid, I wanted to be an architect. And so it, it went all the way through schooling and 47, mm -hmm. all 50 years. Hmm. You've been in what for 50 years? It's I've been working in architecture for 50 years, but I had schooling, you know, for five years to get a degree. And as a young kid, taking art lessons and wanting to be an architect. <laughs> and it's about time. This year may be the, the last, quote, working year. I find that um, wherever you feel a pull, especially after you've been praying, that's an indication of that's where you need to go. Mm. You feel this pull that that's what needs to be done. Have you all ever felt that little thing like that? Yeah. Of the Holy Spirit at yeah. work, isn't it? Yeah. Or after um, praying on a decision, and then it just seems like things just fall into place where, you know, there were so many obstacles at the beginning, and all of a sudden you find the openings, and it's like, wow, 
okay, that's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You just had to make the decision and it all, yeah. Oh, I've had that happen a lot. Mm -hmm. Affirmation. Yeah. Jam, what was the, the book that you mentioned? It, was it a book that you mentioned? That yes, it was a New York Times bestseller, Who Moved the Cheese? Okay. And that's what it talked about was facing change. And there were two little characters and one was up for change and the other one wasn't. <laughs> and it followed the one who wasn't, who kept going back to the same place looking for cheese and the cheese wasn't there anymore. <laughs> and he he didn't want to go ahead and find new paths to new cheese like his fellow did mm -hmm. and it he he struggled and suffered because he would not be brave enough to go ahead and find a new path to new cheese <laughs> and he found out that there was always going to be running out of cheese and the and the need to go find a new source of cheese <laughs> it was it was a really good book, a very short read. Okay. Uh, it was real popular for a while. <laughs> Sounds good. It's one thing that um, children children teach you is uh, you ne never get comfortable <laughs> with <laughs> with one thing. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> nothing ever stays the same no no and you have less control over the older they get or any control <laughs> yeah any other thoughts okay let's see. you are god we praise you you are the lord we acclaim you you are the eternal father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death, and open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name. And finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Are there prayer requests this morning? For Trish, McKenna, Sandy, and Kate. For those suffering from the 
tornado and floods yesterday and before. For Kylie and Cora in their hearts, I pray. For John and for Brianna. For Robert and Carol and Diane on their travels. Mm -hmm. I give thanks for the beauty of this day and for the refreshing, cool air that is with us this morning. <clears throat> Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Amen.